Hi everyone, Yasa Azke Carlos Tirtate to another episode of Dimitra's Dishes. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to make a pastizio baked ziti. This is a Greek twist on classic Italian baked ziti. It's literally pastizio and baked ziti all in one and it's so comforting, so delicious. Your whole family is going to love it. Let's get started. So we're going to begin by doing a few things at the same time, just so that way it all comes together quickly. I have a big pot that's filled with water. I'm just going to bring it to a boil and get that going while I begin making my meat sauce. This is the regular meat sauce that I make when I make pastizia. It's so easy. I'm just going to finely chop an onion, or roughly chop it, it's not really finely chopped. And I'm going to add it to a pot with a little bit of olive oil, about a quarter of a cup. And I'm going to cook it over medium heat until it's nice and soft and golden. If it's taking a little too long, because it might if you cut your onion a little bit bigger the way I did it today, it's not finely chopped, so it might take a little bit longer. While it's cooking, you could add about a cup of water and increase the heat to high. Once the water evaporates and just the oil is left, the onion should have gotten soft. Just cook it a little bit longer until it gets a little bit of color on there. Then I'm going to add the five garlic cloves that I've grated and just warm them through until they're nice and fragrant. That's just going to take a few seconds. Next, I'm going to add two pounds of ground beef to this and I'm just going to mix it around and brown it just a little bit. This pot is a little bit small. I think I'm going to transfer everything to a bigger pot once I'm done. But if you have a bigger pot, start off with a bigger one so you have more surface area. And season the meat with a little bit of salt, black pepper, and half a teaspoon of ground cinnamon. If you really love the taste that cinnamon lends to meat sauce, you can go all the way up to one teaspoon. But be careful because it is a strong flavor. So start off with half, and if you really like it, you could add a little bit more next time. Give everything a nice mix. And I also like to add a little pinch of crushed red pepper flakes for some heat. Next, I'm going to add a can of diced tomatoes. If I had a 30 ounce can of crushed tomatoes, I would just go ahead and add that. But I have a can of diced tomatoes on hand and I also had a can of tomato sauce. To the tomato sauce is basically pureed tomatoes with just a few seasonings. I'm going to add that in there and rinse the can out with a little bit of water give everything a nice mix, and I'm going to let this cook over medium-high heat until the sauce is nice and thick. That's going to take 20 to 30 minutes. Now, as soon as my pasta is done boiling, I'm going to transfer this to the bigger pot, so that way it cooks a little bit faster. It takes much longer in a deeper pot. You need a wider pot. So once my water has come to a boil, I'm going to season it with a little bit of salt, like two teaspoons of salt should be good enough. And I'm going to add a pound of, you're supposed to add ziti pasta, but I find that penne pasta has little ridges and holds a, a lot of the meat sauce in there and I think that it's better than the ziti but you can use ziti for this or the penne pasta go ahead and add a pound of it and cook it according to your package's instructions mine says to boil it for about 11 minutes so that's what I'm gonna do once it's done boiling I'm not gonna drain the water out because I'm gonna save some of that pasta water so I could add it to the tray once everything is gonna come together just to keep everything nice and moist just go ahead and lift the pasta out and put it in a 9 by 13 inch baking pan then I like to um, grate my own mozzarella cheese because it just melts better. Grated mozzarella cheese that's already shredded or whatever and sold at the supermarket has anti-caking agents and stuff that doesn't let it melt as creamy and as smoothly as if you would shred it yourself and it just takes a few minutes in a box grater and if you want it to grate easily you can put it in the freezer for about 10 minutes before you shred it and then it'll just be much easier it won't stick as much and a quick tip to wash your box grater afterwards do it in cold water and the cheese is just going to slide right off set the cheese aside and then uh, to the pasta it's a good time to season it too once it's in the pan i like to drizzle a little bit of olive oil on top add some salt and one or two teaspoons of dried oregano mix that all up and set it aside and now it's time to make the bechamel sauce i'm going to add a third of a cup of olive oil and a third of a cup of all-purpose flour to a saucepan whisk it all up and cook it over medium heat until it's toasted then i'm going to add four cups of cold milk to this i'm going to season it with a little bit of salt black pepper and about a quarter of a teaspoon of ground nutmeg if you have fresh nutmeg that's even better whisk it all up and cook it over medium heat until it comes to a boil and it starts to thicken once it thickens take it off of the heat and then you're going to want to whisk two whole eggs together in a little bowl and temper those eggs with some of that hot milk mixture so that way they don't curdle or turn into scrambled eggs before adding them back to the bechamel sauce. Go ahead and add those eggs back in, whisk that all up, and then add a heaping handful of uh, shredded Parmesan cheese to it. 
whisk that all up and the bechamel is ready. Now it's time to put the whole thing together. So to the pasta, go ahead and add that meat sauce. It should be nice and thick by now. If you have fresh parsley, you could finely chop it and add it to the meat sauce, but I'm just gonna go ahead and add a teaspoon of dried oregano to it. I'm gonna rinse the pot out with some of that pasta water, about a cup or two of it should be enough. Go ahead and add that to the pasta and mix it all up, then add the bechamel. And instead of leaving it on top like we do for pastizio, you're gonna to wanna to mix that in to make that meat sauce creamy. So mix that all up, and then you're gonna to top it with that shredded mozzarella that you have saved and saved on the side. It's gonna make that beautiful cheesy layer that we know and love that Baked Ziti has. The oven is preheated to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. This is gonna bake on the center rack for about 25 minutes or so. Once it comes out of the oven, you wanna let it sit for a little bit. Don't take it out of the oven until the cheese gets that beautiful color like so it could look like a pizza, but let it sit for about 20, 30 minutes and then it's gonna be ready to serve. All right, so the baked ziti came out of the oven in 25 minutes, exactly, it was done, the color was beautiful, the cheese was melted and slightly crispy, not crispy, but just the way pizza gets when when it gets nice and bubbly and delicious. It smells so good, it's time for the taste test. Now, the longer you let it sit, the better the pieces will hold together. I would honestly, if I'm serving this to my family, I would not let it sit for more than 15 minutes because then it also dries up a little bit. So I like for there to be some sauce left inside of it. Oh, it just smells so good. You could just serve this up in bowls, family style, and everybody's gonna love it. Let's do the taste test. Oh my God. So good. Out of this world delicious. Um, I love pastizio, but this might be a little bit better. For those who don't like the thick layer of bechamel on top, when it's inside and mixed in the meat sauce, it just becomes so creamy and delicious. The cheese on top is melted and gives it a little bit of that pizza texture. You guys are gonna definitely love this one. I hope you guys give this a try. The exact recipe is on the website. You could head on over and print it out. It's at DimitrosDishes.com. Let me know if you make it, what you think, and if you have any recipe requests, post them down below. If you wanna learn how to make a classic pastizio, click over here, and I'll see you right over there. Yes, us.